All right, welcome to the second chapter 10 tutorial where we look a little bit more at the graph that we made in the last tutorial which shows the relationship between expected return and standard deviation for a variety of portfolios containing TJ Maxx and ExxonMobil. So let's take a look at some of these examples. Now let's look at our first portfolio where we are all invested in ExxonMobil, right? We've got 0% TJ Maxx. This portfolio, we can find it right here on our graph. It has a standard deviation of 14.21, that's our measure of risk, and a return of 11.9. Well, the golden rule of investing, or if anything, like any type of, well, I guess the golden rule of investing, or the golden rule of risk and return, is that an investor will take on more risk only if they can get a higher level of return. Um, and similarly, an investor can only get a higher level of return if they're willing to take on extra risk. And we saw that a lot of portfolios, combinations, adhere to that rule, but not all are going to. So in this portfolio here, this first one, where it's all TJ Maxx, I'm sorry, all ExxonMobil, our standard deviation is 14.2% and our expected returns 11.9%. But let's compare that here to the next point where we've taken 10% of our money, removed it from an investment in ExxonMobil, and invested it instead in TJ Maxx. Well, look at this. It's got a standard deviation of 12% and an expected return of 13%. This violates kind of that golden rule of investing. We can reduce our standard deviation and increase our return at the same time. So no rational investor would hold this portfolio here if they could hold this portfolio here. Lower risk, higher return. Huh, you know, that's kind of a no-brainer. No one's going to choose this portfolio because this one's better. Well, let's look at our third one. 20% in ExxonMobil, 20% in TJ Maxx, 80% in ExxonMobil, gives us a portfolio that has a standard deviation of 11.29% and a return of 14.19%. So what do we have? We've got less risk, higher return again. So no investor is going to hold this portfolio or this portfolio because they can increase their return while decreasing risk. So these portfolios that are down here below some point here, right, are going to be portfolios that you wouldn't invest in. You wouldn't hold 10% TJ Maxx, 90% ExxonMobil because you could get a better return with lower risk by increasing your investment in TJ Maxx. So what we're interested in is rational portfolios, efficient portfolios. And what that means is portfolios where the relationship between risk and return is such that you can get a higher return only by taking a little extra risk, right? And you may be willing to take on this little extra risk because it's going to bring you a higher level of return. So none of these portfolios are good. So we're going to X them out. But one thing that we want to know is where do the inefficient portfolios end and the efficient portfolios start? Well, it's going to be the point on this graph where standard deviation is the lowest. It's going to be the lowest risk portfolio, right? We can just see it graphically. And we call this the minimum variance portfolio. We use the term variance uh, to denote risk. Uh, standard deviation is a measure of risk. So the minimum variance portfolio and the minimum standard deviation portfolio are the same. How do we find what the minimum variance portfolio is? We need to look at tools. You may need not have solver. You may need to add it in. And so you can choose it as an add-in and select it and tell it okay and then in a minute or so you should have it. So I have my solver so I'm just going to use it and what solver does is it through a very lengthy process of trial and error can find for you the minimum value of um, the minimum value of variance or the maximum value of variance or the portfolio that yields a percentage of 10%, right? We can use all these different things. So we want our measure of variance, which is standard deviation, which I want in this cell it didn't like what I was doing. So I want my objective cell to be my standard deviation. So my objective is to minimize standard deviation 
by changing variable cells, and my variable cell is going to be my percentage in TJ Maxx. And I just tell it to solve. And it thinks, and it thinks, and it has lunch, and there it comes up with the solution. So I'm going to tell it OK. And what it tells me is that at a portfolio that contains 21.770535636952 TJ Maxx and the rest in ExxonMobil, that's going to give us a standard deviation or a measure of risk, a measure of variance of 11.3. That's going to be our lowest risk portfolio. I want to give us a couple of extra decimals there because 11.3 didn't look any lower than 11.29. So what I want to do here is I'm going to insert a row. I'm going to insert a row because I want this minimum variance portfolio to show up on this graph. And then what I'm going to say here is percentage in TJX. I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to add some decimals. And then, because a data table, it isn't going to want me to change it. I don't suspect I'll be able to drag this down. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I could, but it didn't bring down the formula. So since it didn't do that, I'm going to delete this all, or clear the contents, and I'm going to redo my data table. Data, data table. Column input cell is percentage in TJ Maxx. There we go. So here is my minimum variance portfolio. That's going to be the portfolio that has the least risk. My graph didn't update, so let's try selecting my data. So I want my x values to be my standard deviation. I really do. And I want my Y values to be my expected portfolio return. There we go. Now it contains all of my points. And my minimum variance portfolio is in there. My 11.27 standard deviation and 14.39 expected return. So one thing that we can do to make our graph look a little bit more useful is we can identify all of the points on our graph that are efficient. So we know that an efficient portfolio is a portfolio that a rational investor is going to choose. A rational investor is not going to choose this portfolio because they can reduce their risk at the same time as increasing their return. Right? An investor is only going to start having to really think about the portfolio once they've increased their percentage in TJ Maxx to 21.771%. Because after that, they can get a greater return, but only by taking on extra risk. So the portfolios that a rational investor might choose from, we call those the efficient returns. Those are the efficient portfolios, and that is the efficient frontier. So to get Excel to graph it for me, I've made this extra column. And all I do is bring over my expected returns again. Why? Because I'm going to add another set of data. So I'm going to select data, and I'm going to add a set. And I want my x values to be my standard deviations of my efficient portfolios. And then for my y values, I want my expected returns of my efficient portfolios. And I'm going to click OK. And what that does is it adds a second line on top of the blue line, which indicate our efficient portfolios. So in this case, the efficient frontier is all portfolios with a percentage invested in TJ Maxx that is above 21.227%. If this is too irritating for you, you can indicate the efficient frontier with a sentence. You can indicate it by doing a highlight and saying efficient portfolios are highlighted in yellow, right? Either way. Well, another question that comes up is find a portfolio, an efficient portfolio that has a return of a given amount, right? So we can use Solver again for that. Let's say, for instance, that we want a portfolio that has an expected return of 20%. 
So what we'll do is we'll use solver again, tools, solver. And when it shows up, we'll say that we want to set our objective cell, not standard deviation this time, but expected return, to a value of 20%. And we want to do that by changing the variable cell, which is the percentage invested in TJ max. And we tell it to solve. And it waits. And it thinks. And we're going to keep the solver solution. So if our portfolio contains 20, I mean 71% TJ max, 70.785, 210, etc., then we'll get a return of 20%. And that's going to be on the efficient frontier because it lays on this portion of the graph. So you may want to add another row where our portfolio composition is at basically 71%. And in this case, we can copy here, we can paste here, give ourselves a few more decimal places, and recreate our data table, your favorite thing to do, data, data table. In the column, we have the percentages of TJ Maxx. Our value driver for percentage of TJ Maxx is over here. It gives us our point, and this here is going to represent the portfolio that has an expected return of 20%. I'll re-graph this just so we can see them. Haha, oh, it doesn't want to show this one. I've got to right-click drag that down. Oh, and this is in the way. Let's try it again. Because I want it to include that point. There we go. So we've got our portfolio with a return of 20%, and I've got our minimum variance portfolio. And here is our efficient frontier. You can indicate it by changing the color or writing a sentence, however you feel is the most efficient. No pun intended. All right. So that's chapter 10. Email me um, if you have any questions or come to office hours. I'll talk to you soon.